I'm gonna be there on Friday, 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 what is going on with my brain? Hey everyone, it's Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. Welcome to, uh-oh, episode 149 of the Love and Stitches podcast. Today is Tuesday, September 6th, I believe. Clearly, I should have looked at all the numbers before I started recording, but oh well, I think we're close <laughs> at least. Um, it is a lovely rainy day here in New York City. Um, it makes me just want to like cuddle up and watch all the shows, catch up on all the shows that I didn't get to watch over the last weekend, and work on all my new projects that I have to show you, which I should be able to do later today. So very excited about that. My assistant toaster has decided he wants to be in frame today, so I guess we're just going to get his bum. Oh, there he is. Cute little boy. Um, I have a finished object to show you, a brand new project to show you, and even some yarn that I got this weekend to share. I've got lots of stuff to share today, but I did want to show you what I'm wearing. I am wearing one of my favorite um, tees, which is the Women's Knotted Tee from my spread shop. This is the knitting um, version from the Definition Collection, and I share that because these shirts have been gone for a long, long time. They've been retired, but they are now back. Um, so you can shop this shirt and many more like it through October 21st. But if you want to get a t-shirt to like bring with you to Rhinebeck, for example, um, make sure you order by around September 16th. So you allow at least three weeks to a month for shipping to get to you beforehand. I'm going to have lots of reminders about this limited time collection throughout this podcast and other videos, because I want to make sure that anyone who wants one has heard that they're here and they're back but only through October 21st. Okay, let me see if there's anything else I needed to share in the beginning. Uh, oh, I'm gonna be sharing a tip today on how to use try it on tubing. So look for that in a later segment. And if you're coming back to find that video, this is the video that it's in. Okay, I think we're ready. So let's get started with projects. I'm so excited because I finished my muscle girl hat. I'm going to show you that in just a second. I want to start um, with the yarn here. And here it is. Okay, so this yarn is Circus Tonic. And Circus Tonic Handmade, excuse me. And it is out of Australia, but I got it at Do You Knit in New Jersey. And this is their custom colorway called You Are Mighty. So only available there at Do You Knit in New Jersey. Now, when I started this hat, my goal was to use up as much of the skein as possible. I have another muscle bro hat. Actually, you know what? I want to show it to you. Hold on. Let me grab it. Yes, I want to do a comparison. So this is also a muscle bro hat by Isolde Teague. This is the one that I made a couple of years ago and I wore all last year. Like I just wore it every single day of winter. I finally washed it to put it away. There was like a little like chocolate stain or something on it. I got it out, but I was wanting to make another one because I wear this one so much. So I decided to get started early and make one. It's just, this is just the perfect pattern for when you're just wanting something simple and easy to knit on portable, um, but just a little bit different than socks. So here is mine out of the Circus Tonic Handmade. And as you can see, I haven't doubled it up yet. We're going to do that together. I haven't even tried it on, but I wanted to use up all of the skein pretty much. This version is slightly slouchy and it used 80 grams. I, I think I'm knitting the adult medium, I think. Um, my Ravelry project page is down below. I'll make sure to update that with the size that I'm knitting, but I know I put like how many stitches and everything. So I did an extra inch on this one around. And then I did like an extra four or five inches in length because I wanted to one, again, use up as much of the yarn as I could. And then also I wanted to be able to have it slouchy and folded up. So we'll see how that worked out. Um, I have this much left and it is four grams of yarn. So I feel like I did a really good job of using up as much of the skein as I could without getting nervous about not having enough. And the way that I did that, so you start at one end 
and you increase and then you just knit straight for like all of this. So I was weighing my skein on a scale and when I got to 52 grams because I had a hundred gram skein, I think, I don't know if I actually weighed it before, but it should be around a hundred grams. When I got to 52 grams, I put in a marker and I did 52 grams because I didn't want to go all the way to 50 grams, which would be exactly half and then like end up running out of yarn. So that extra two grams, which translates to four total extra grams because on either side it would have been an extra two grams. I had some insurance in there just in case it wasn't quite right. So I had that marker there in the middle and then I knit it knit until I had the same amount. I literally was just like folding the hat in half to check. Like I wasn't counting rows because that's too much. So I would just like fold the hat in half at the marker and see if I was up to the um, like increase lines yet and once I got there I started the decreases on the other side which look very similar and I ended up with exactly four grams so it worked I had that 52 grams with the two grams of insurance on either side which is a total of four extra grams so I had plenty plenty of yarn with 100 grams so I feel really good about it I think I think that's all I can remember. I did include some notes because before I realized that the pattern had been updated to include gauges up to nine stitches per inch, I was using an old version of the pattern that only had gauges up to seven stitches per inch, and I'm getting eight stitches per inch on a size two with fingering weight yarn. So I did some of my own math for that. So I don't know exactly what size this correlates to in the new version of the pattern. Sorry, <laughs> I like to just, uh, you know, wing it and go for things. So I think it's time to try this on. It looks, looks so cool. I'm using a new camera mode today, so hopefully everything is working out okay. I think it looks good. I don't know if you can be able to tell the difference, but okay, let's fold this in half. So basically you just take kind of like, you just kind of like separate it because it's all one tube and then stuff one end like up into the other one. Like once you have it done, I mean, you can see that this one just like looks nice and crispy on the bottom. It kind of kind of gets used to being that way. But when it's a fresh new hat, it's a little, a little silly to get going here. Okay, I'm gonna turn it the other way and just see. It'll kind of just like fall into place. I'm kind of trying to match like the the belly button, if you will. By the way, I included the link to this cast on in my project page. It is a crochet pinhole cast on, and I have already gotten better at it, as you'll see in an upcoming project, which may or may not be also a muscle bro hat. Okay, I feel like that's pretty even. Kind of shake it. Yeah, this one's definitely longer, which is what I was going for. It should be longer. Oh yeah, definitely longer than my first one, which is what I wanted because I want to be able to fold it up because why not? I just want to have one that's like a little different. Um, and it should be a little bit wider. Um, it's not really looking. Yeah, actually it should be an inch wider. And to be perfectly honest, that looks like it could be like half of an inch, which folded in half is an inch, right? Okay, let's stop talking. Okay, let's put it on. So if I don't fold it up, <laughs> I have a ton of extra um, room, which is not how I'm intending to wear it. So let me get it pulled on a little bit more and I can do fold. So now I have quadruple layer around my ears and I still have a little bit of a slouch, which I do like because I'm not putting a pom-pom or anything on this. I love it. Oh my gosh, it's so good. It feels comfortable. It doesn't feel tight. I'm gonna have to see if I like having this extra inch of space or having it a little bit tighter, which this one's a little bit tighter because sometimes when it's like, when it's stuck in it and it's comfy, when you first put it on, it then stretches out and gets a little bit too big. So sometimes it's nice that it is a little bit tighter with a stockinette hat, but I think either way it's gonna be fine. So this is gonna be so warm in the winter. 
I love it. Now, if you weren't wanting to use a whole skein, I don't know, like, is it worth doing all that extra knitting for a fold up? I don't know. Time will tell. I'll show you what this one looks like because I do also love this one. Like this, I think looks super cute. I actually might prefer this without the roll up brim. What do you think? And this one, like I said, used 80 grams of yarn. It probably has a little bit of extra here. I guess if I, let's see, if I pull that all the way to my head, I could get like the tiniest roll up here, which is actually kind of cute too. So you can wear it so many different ways. And the best thing about this pattern is it comes in a bunch of different sizes, I think from like child to like adult large. And then it has a bunch of different gauges. So you can use like worsted weight yarn or I really like the fingering weight yarn. Um, and it's just nice and simple to work on. So again, this is not the one that I made. <laughs> That's my first version of the Muscle Bro hat. And here's the brand new one, all done. And I think I'll just have to maybe wear this around today and, and see how it feels. I mean, the best test for anything is when you're wearing it in real life for its real purpose. So it'll be kind of fun this winter to now have these two versions to wear. So I love it. Muscle Burrow by Isolde Teague, and you might see another one coming up here in just a bit. Moving on into whips. I basically have two brand new projects this week, but I'm gonna start with the one that you have already seen because it was started, I just started it over. And because I'm the kind of person that likes to see how long a project takes me, I moved the Ravelry start date on the project to the day that I started it over <laughs> because I'm like, wait, all this two weeks when I was swatching and starting and waiting on yarn, those don't count. So, you know, you may be, you may be the same type of person, but my Alpen Glow. So this is what I showed last week. I don't think, oh, you know what was happening last week is I was waiting for my pink fluffy yarn to come in. So I'm knitting the Alpen Glow by Andrea Mallory, which is the um, 2022 Rhinebeck sweater. And I've had some, I'll just do a brief overview just in case you haven't seen all of the previous episodes. I've been struggling to find the right yarn. I ordered a kit like right when they came out, or I ordered yarn directly from Magpie right when it came out. The yarn came in, I didn't like my color. So then I ordered more yarn from um, Farmer's Daughter's Fibers. I liked most of the colors, but one was still off. And so then I got um, another skein of yarn from my friend Brianna, who's a Little Wolf Knits. And that came the day I recorded the podcast last week. And so since then, I've made a lot of progress. I can't wait to show you. But basically, I had everything ready to go. I started in with my new pink, pink fluffy yarn. And I decided that I didn't like this needle size. It was hurting my hands. It was like just feeling uncomfortable and tight. The fabric wasn't looking great. And so I decided to start over on another needle. <laughs> and that's what I'm gonna show you next. But let's go through the yarn really quickly. I don't wanna spoil that too much. So I am using for my main color, Farmer's Daughter Fibers in, I think it's called, I think it's called Recollect. Yes. It's Farmer's Daughter Fibers in Recollect is the base and it is called Hey Victor. And it's this really deep bluey, purpley, kind of reads blue black, uh, really deep color. It's a little bit thicker than the yarn suggested um, in the pattern, which is why I had some gauge trouble. And so I'm actually knitting the whole thing on a little bit of a bigger gauge. I'm knitting at like, uh, five and a half stitches per inch instead of like five and three quarters stitches per inch. I, I That may be wrong. I'm pretty sure I'm knitting at five and a half stitches per inch, but I can't remember the exact gauge. I'm like one stitch off over four inches and I just couldn't, I just couldn't knit with that smaller needle even though I got the gauge. It was uncomfortable. I didn't like the way my swatches looked. So here's what I've done in the last week. I knit a new swatch. I had it already already knit up to here in anticipation of my new pink color coming in. I knew it was going to be worth the time to complete a swatch with the new pink fluffy yarn before doing it on the sweater because 
This takes way less time than the sweater does, and if I didn't like it, I wanted to know before I got all of this fluffy in and, try, and then tried to rip that out. That would have been really hard. So this swatch told me a lot of things. It helped me test out the larger needle and see what my gauge would really be in the mosaic color work and this color work, see if the fluff worked, which I think it looks good, and I finished this off. So I did this, like I think the same day I recorded the podcast last week. I have so many swatches for this project and I always hang on, even though these are cut and these are pretty unusable, I do hang on to my swatches for a couple reasons. One, because I will sometimes, like I did with this project, measure them again. So I pretty much decided on the smaller needle size, the one that got me gauge. And then when I started knitting the project and it was really hurting my, my hands, I was able to go back to a swatch that I had done on the larger needle and go, okay, my gauge isn't really off by that much. If I did knit with this gauge, how big of a sweater would I get? And that helped me um, figure out what I wanted to do. So I hang on to swatches for that reason. And then the other reason is just in case I get to the end of the project and I'm like binding off and I have 10 stitches to go, I could take that swatch apart. And even though it's like in little strands because it's been knit in the round and cut, I could still use that to bind off. It would be better than having to like take out a row of knitting or something. So I just hang on to my swatches until the very end of a project until it's blocked and done and I'm happy with it. And then I say goodbye to them. Okay. What was I doing? I was in the middle of showing yarn. My other colors, <laughs> sorry, um, my other colors, and I probably won't go over the colors every single week, but again, my project pages are linked down below. So I do have, I think I do have the colors and everything. And if not, I'll get it updated before this goes live. So my contrast color is also Farmer's Daughter Fibers, but this is a slightly different base. It's a newer one for them called Reminisce, really similar to the Recollect. And this color I have is called Bitterroot. Okay, new camera mode. There we go, Bitterroot. And it's a really lovely, beautiful purple color. My Spin Cycle, which is really like the reason why I kept changing yarn is because I wanted something to feature this. My spin cycle is from Do You Knit? Now, right now you're getting like this, all this green and like deep ready pink, which I am probably most likely going to cut out of here because I don't like that part of it. I want it to all be like pinks and purples and everything. But this is my spin cycle yarn. And this color is also just like the Muscleboro hat is a Do You Knit exclusive. It's called Unicorn. And I got both of these yarns when I was on the New Jersey Yarn Crawl earlier this year. So it's fun to be able to use them for such a special project. I have two skeins of the spin cycle and it's only going to take like one and like a tenth of a skein. So I feel confident of like being able to cut out colors of it that I don't like and then just rejoin the yarn only using the pinks and purples that I really love. My last color is the one that I waited on and wasn't sure if I should change and got like so many different colors for and I am so so glad I did. So this is the yarn that came just last week and it is the absolute perfect pink for this sweater. This is from The Little Wolf Knits and I've never knit with the base like this before. I love it. It's called Ballet Slippers although I kind of think that um, Brianna upped the pink on it for me. She was sending me pictures as she was dyeing it. And thank you, Brie, because this is, this is just perfect. This makes the sweater. Um, so if you order ballet slippers, um, you may want to say like the way that Natalie got, got hers. Um, but this is a baby Surrey alpaca in silk lace weight, which worked out great because the other Surrey alpacas that I had were a little bit thicker. So I was able to double this, like the pattern says, and it wasn't like super thick like my other one was. So not just the color, but also the actual yarn. It all worked out just so great. I'm really happy that I had patience. I mean, I didn't feel super patient about it, but I did practice the patience and I waited and I got colors and yarn and everything that I think just looks so good. So you've waited long enough. 
I can't wait to show you how it's looking. So without further ado, here is my Alpen Glow. <gasps> Ta-da! Oh my gosh. I mean, it looks like these colors were just made to go together. The purple from Farmer's Daughter is like just the right purple for the spin cycle. The pink from The Little Wolf Knits is like just the perfect pink from the spin cycle too. It's a different look than a lot of the other sweaters that have a lot more contrast going on, but I really, really like it. And my spin cycle is not these light pinks and purples the whole way through. You can see that like deeper, redder pinks are coming up and even like dark purple and dark, like a, almost like a burgundy color. But again, I'm probably cutting out the green because I don't like the green. It looks like Christmas to me and it's not a Christmas sweater. So that's probably coming out, but I think it's gonna be really cool to see it change throughout the sweater. I have just finished the color work and the first chart. And since I'm making one of the, I think I'm making the second size. Since I'm making the second size, I think I'm actually done with the yoke. So I'm gonna be trying this on very, very soon and getting into the mosaic. So this is all progress from the last week. It honestly went by way too fast, the color work. It was so much fun to do, like just going one type of thing into the next, into the next. I had so much fun with it, even starting it over. Like, I don't feel like it really slowed me down all that much. And now I'm just like ready to cruise on it. So just in case this is not something that you're making right now, which I'm sure it's not everyone's making it, um, but this part right here looks really wide because you'll come back up later and do the ribbing on the neck. So don't be too concerned. It's supposed to look like this. I am curious how it will look when I try it on. Um, but yeah, that's coming up. I'm gonna try it on here. I'm gonna show you how to use try it on tubing because I need to do that anyway. And I've learned some tips and tricks over, over the last several projects that I made to make it a whole lot easier. So that segment is coming up in just a little bit. I have one brand new project to show you after I finish the Musselboro hat. Actually, before I even finished it, I knew I was getting towards the end. So I figured I needed another simple project to have to replace that one. And so I started another Musselboro hat. <laughs> Same hat by Isolde Teague, except I'm doing something a little bit different. Actually, two things that are pretty different this time. So, oh, here's all my stuff. We just came back from a trip, so my there's like notions in my project bags, which is not usually how I carry things around. So I got, <laughs> there's so many things in here that are not supposed to be in here. So I have these two wonderful yarns that were custom dyed for me um, by Rain's Obsessive Stitchery and they are Dallas Stars colorways. I have the labels right here, but of course I've already forgotten. One of them is Victory Park and one of them is the hangar. And Victory Park is the neighborhood that the um, American Airlines Center is in. And the hangar is the shop where all the merchandise is sold. These are not available for purchase. They were custom. And also those names were something that like we just picked out together. I don't think we can actually name things that because they're proper, proper names, but they're just for me. So it doesn't matter. Anyway, so I am doing, trying to do two hats, two muscle bar hats, one for myself and one for Kent um, in these custom colorways. My goal is to have half of the hat be the solid green and the other half be this multicolored. And what that will do is <laughs> mean that we could have two different hats in theory, one that would be all green and then you could like flip it and the other would be all multi. But I have an issue. I didn't realize when, until I was winding these up, that this is a full 100 grams, which is perfect. This is only 70 grams. Because I used it for socks, for like heels, toes, and cuffs, I guess I used up a ton of it. And so I'm a little worried that I won't be able to make two hats that are completely, one half completely green. We were already planning to make the hats not as um, not as long or slouchy. Like Kent doesn't want his slouchy at all. He just wants it to be fitted and not roll up and everything. Um, so maybe I can get it to work, but I think 
what is totally doable is having like a little bit more of it be this color so that it almost looks like a brim of this with solid on top. So that may be what I have to do. I'm hoping to avoid that, um, but we will just have to see. So I'm starting with my own hat and I'm going to knit it on the smaller of the two like hat sizes that I've previously made. So I have eight fewer stitches per round. That should save me some yarn, <clears throat> but I'm trying one other thing. I'm all tangled up here. Hold on. Okay, there. I'm trying one other new thing besides the half and half colors, which I've seen other people do. I'm trying something that I have not seen anyone do. That doesn't mean that there aren't people that have done it. I haven't actually like looked through the Muscleboro project pages. I probably should, but I am trying this. I am trying a half ribbed, half not ribbed hat. We're gonna see how it works. So basically, I am just doing ribbing, one by one ribbing, and otherwise following the pattern exactly the same. The solid will all be ribbed, and then when I switch over to the multicolor, I'm going to just knit and stockinette. So we'll see how that works out. I'm not really sure if it will be like because like ribbing is a little bit see-through and having that other color on the other side, who knows how that will look, but I'm gonna try it and you'll get to see how it turns out. And if it's terrible, I can just take it out, <laughs> no big deal. So I have just gotten started. I'm getting about, I think I have like maybe eight more rows to go and I'm done with all the increasing and I'll just be able to knit and rib. And again, I'm just working on my own hat first and then I will, start kids as long as everything works out. So since I have about 70 grams, I'm hoping to use 30 on my hat and 40 on Kent's hat. It might actually work out because if we're not doing any kind of slouch or roll up brim, it will use less yarn. And my previous one, this one that is slouchy, used 80 grams in total. So I'm thinking if I cut off, let's see. This is a very like, if I cut off like, I don't know, two inches that I may be able to get 10 grams back? Probably not. Well, we'll just give it a try. <laughs> we'll see. Who knows? It, it's it's going to be, it's going to take some time to just like test things out and blah, test it out and see how it goes. But either way, it's going to be cute. I w think it'll be adorable for us to have matching hats or like semi matching hats. Maybe Kent's won't have rib. Maybe it'll just be solid. I don't know. We'll see. But I've got a new project started, so now I have something to take with me on the go when I'm walking to Pilates and all of that stuff. It's always important, I think, to have a portable project on hand. Okay, so that's all of the projects for this episode, but I did wanna talk about projects coming up and some yarn that I purchased. So last Saturday, the um, Stephen West M. Calfer 2022 twists and turns um, kits went on sale. And I have never, just double checking to make sure that's true. I'm pretty sure I've never bought a kit for any type of MCAL like ever. I know I haven't bought one for the Stephen West MCAL and that's the only one that I remember participating in. So I'm pretty sure I've never bought a kit, <laughs> but I've always kind of wanted to. And then I end up putting things together like, you know, a skein from my stash and you know, going out and getting stuff at different places. I've done a lot of fun things that way. Um, actually, the very first year that I did the Stephen West MCAL, Shawl MCAL, I was at, um, I just forgot what it's called, Super Super Summer Knit Together, SSK in Nashville, which is a like retreat and marketplace. And I was able to put together five colors from different booths at that marketplace. And I was putting them together for a different Stephen West shawl because it, that time, I think it's, it was in July, the MCAL hadn't come out yet. But when the MCAL came out yet, came, came out later that year, I was able to use all five skeins that I had purchased there. Um, then a couple years later, I went to McKinney Knittery and picked out all of my yarn. That was fun. So just like a one, one place. And then last year, I used one skein from Stash. And then I went to four different stores around New York City and picked out all of my different yarns. And that was really challenging because I didn't know what each store was going to have. And I already had like a skein of 75-25 yarn. And so I wanted to use the same base, 
but it was hard to find the same base or like get a lot of options for different bases. So I ended up like changing things after the fact. And then I didn't honestly didn't really love my shawl because I just didn't really like the colors that I picked out, but it was still all a really fun experience. So like no regrets or anything, but this year I knew I wanted to try something different because why not? Why do things the same? Try something new. So I purchased a kit and the color that I got, the kit that I got, I think it was called um, pink blush. I do have a picture to show. Um, was it called pink blush? Now I'm forgetting what it was called. I like watched all of the videos and took a screenshot. Yeah. Pink blush is the color that the color that I got. So it's like a bright pink, a lighter pink, and then like a moodier pinky orange color. And I'm really excited to, to get that and just have everything picked. It feels weird. Like, I feel like I'm going to now like see other things that I like even more and be like, Oh, I wish I got that. But there's something good in like, I guess mentally for me in the process of choosing and saying I picked it and I do love it and I can change it or not. <laughs> if I see something else that I want, I can get that. But I think it will be a good exercise for me to like have picked something and like kind of revel and like having made a decision not last minute, which is the new Natalie is not making last minute decisions. So I I'm very excited for it. And I am using a single ply base, which is something that I really want to do because I just love single ply. And I don't have any I don't have any in my stash. I'm like, wait, I keep making these, um, broad, like never any, never have done that. But I, I'm also not hundred percent sure. Um, but I didn't have anything in my stash that I could use. So I needed to buy yarn anyway. I'm really happy to have gotten the kit. One more thing that I have made a purchase on. So we were out of town this weekend and we went to an Atlanta yarn store called the Craftivist. Craftivist. And I saw a yarn that I had never seen before, a local dyer um, called Ryan Yarn. And this color is so fun. It is called um, Just a Ghost at Most, which I thought is so fun for Halloween coming up because I need some spooky, fun colors for October to knit on. So I grabbed two skeins of the Twist Sock Base, 80% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon. And I figured I can use two. I can keep one, give one away um, as a prize. I don't really know what I'm gonna do yet, but I really like this color, so I grabbed it. So Ryan Yarn, if you're um, in Atlanta, they sell it at the Craftivist. They have so many beautiful colors, um, hand dyed out of Athens, Georgia. And so I'm sure you can also purchase online, but it was really cute, just a ghost just a ghost at most. It was really hard to choose a color, but like this one because of the season was the one that was screaming at me, take me home. <laughs> so I had to buy it. All right, that wraps up the project section. For this month's tip, I'm going to show you how to use try it on tubing on my Alpen Glow sweater. So this try it on tubing is something that I have battled with because I Got some many years ago before it was like super popular and I hated it to be perfectly honest. And then I was sent some from Yarnia and it looks like this. It's this rubbery tubing comes in different colors. It's hollow. I'll be able to show it better once we, once we get to um, the desk, but you basically put it on your needle tips, transfer all your stitches to the tubing so that you can try on your garments. You can try on sweaters. I used it a lot to try on my seaside dress as I was making it. You could use it even for shawls and stuff just to like spread out your stitches really wide and see how things are looking. But I have learned a lot of things since starting to use it that make it much easier to use. And I wanna share those tips with you before you use it on your next sweater. So without further ado, let's head to the desk and I will show you my best tips for try it on tubing. All right, so first you wanna make sure to choose the right size for your cord. They're all the same size, I guess, as far as the tubing, but there are different lengths sometimes. So since this is a sweater, I wanna choose the longest one because we're gonna take our stitches completely off the needles. Needles will not be attached and it's going to be on the tubing. Then just take one end here. Let's see. 
Uh, can you tell? It kind of, there we go. It's, it's a hollow tube. I know it's really not that easy to see right there on the screen, but take one of your needle tips and you're going to place the tube onto the needle tip and push it onto there as firm as you can. You can see, you can kind of see the needle tip like through the tubing. You want to push it onto there pretty good. It comes off, you know, it shouldn't like pull off when you just barely tug on it, but it is going to come off when you tug on it. Now, you're going to start scooching your stitches onto the tubing. And I just flipped mine around because I usually find it more comfortable to put the knitting needle in my dominant hand, I think. I kind of have to play with this, but you can play with it either way, whether you have um, I'm right-handed, so if I have the knitting needle on my left hand, I find it kind of hard to scoot the stitches, but if I have the knitting needle on my right hand, my dominant hand, I find it easier to scoot the stitches onto the tubing. So play with it. If it's feeling not great, maybe try switching which hand the needle is in and which hand the cord is in. So here's the key. We want to scrunch our stitches. We kind of want to like load them onto the knitting needle, so scrunch them up. And then we're gonna be gentle here when we put them on to the tubing. I know this is really dark. Um, so as you put them over the tubing, you have to be very loose. You can't pull or you're gonna pop the cord over. So you can be like more aggressive here as you um, load your stitches. See, you can see they're kind of scrunched. Load your stitches here and then be gentle. Like I'm not pushing hard. I'm just kind of letting them go over the tubing. Now, something that I've learned is that you cannot do this with super small needles. Really, I think anything smaller than a US-3 is not gonna work because the tubing is almost bigger than the needle itself. So you're just gonna keep going. You can come to the other side of your needle here and like scrunch your stitches up keep scrunching them. And whenever you're pulling, working with the tubing, you're gentle. Don't pull your stitches on the tubing or you're going to pop again. You're going to lose the connection. So as we're keeping things scrunched up here on the needle and letting them gently go on the cord, we want to keep our stitches spread out here on the cord so you can spread them out. And whenever you're pulling on the cord, don't hold on to the knitting needle, hold on to the cord and the cord, <laughs> because again, we don't want to uh, disconnect. This is something that I've had to learn. So I'm scrunching and I'm, I'm gently working over that join right there between the needle and the cord. And then I'm coming to the cord itself, holding the cord and the cord and spreading my stitches out. You want to do this the whole time or you're going to end up with really scrunched up stitches that you won't be able to move and you also won't be able to try on. So scrunch gently onto the cord, gently and then spread it out. So I think we'll just speed this part up because you don't need to see me continuing to do the same thing over again, but essentially be patient as you do it. It is worth it. It will save you time in the long run to not lose any of your stitches. Okay, I'm almost done. I've got the last little bit of stitches here from my needle. I wanna get all of the stitches onto the cord, every single one of them. And I've been really patient and I've been spreading things out as I go. This is gonna save me so much time. And I think I've been recording here for seven minutes, but I feel like if I wasn't talking, it would have only taken me five. It's worth the five minutes to try something on and see if it's going well. So here's those last few stitches. I'm gonna slide them all the way onto the cord. I'm still not gonna pull on my needle. Never pull on the needle because you might pop off of the cord. So I'm gonna hold onto my cord and scrunch so I have like a little cord tail and then you can disconnect, okay? Your needle should be completely off. Don't include your needle when you're trying things on because you might pull and, and lose stitches. So I'm gonna scrunch so that I have a good like tail here on this end and start working my stitches around. Um, you'll see also that I just left my stitch markers on here. That's my beginning of round marker, they can stay. 
they're going to be right in there just as if a knitting needle cord was in there. Okay, I think I probably want a little more cord than this on this end. This is insurance when I try it on so it doesn't, the stitches don't stretch out. So I'm going to pull some more and just work my stitches around. This tubing is so great. Gives you so much space to try things on. Okay. Now, that's only half of it, but that's a big difference than my knitting needle here. I would never have been able to try on anything with that 24 inch needle. This cord is super duper long. I still have extra, but you definitely wanna leave at least like eight inches on one side because when I do try this on, my stitches are going to stretch. So now that I've got everything all spread out, I'm gonna go try this on and then I will show you how to get it back onto the needle. That try on was great. It gave me really good info, like that I need to do at least another inch of knitting before even considering splitting for the sleeves. And I believe on this sweater in particular, this is Alpine Glow, um, by the way, I think I'm going to go ahead and pick up and knit the neck and then put it back on the tubing and block it because it's a little tighter than I expected it to be. And so I think with blocking and having the neck on there, I'll really be able to tell if I'm in the right place for the sleeve. That's another great thing about the tubing is you can uh, soak the whole thing. I've done this several times before. Just make sure to take off any metal stitch markers. Okay, let's get this back on. This part actually I find a little easier than getting it off, but it's, it's a similar method. So find where you have the shorter end of the tubing. We don't wanna waste all of our time with this long end, like getting it all back on here. So find the shorter end, that's where we're going to connect our needle. Now the opposite one, the longer one, this is the one we're gonna start scrunching our stitches. So you can go ahead and pull on that longer one and start scrunching all those stitches down. So I'm, I'm leaving the shorter one be for now and I'm scrunching with the longer end because I wanna get all my, all my stitches like locked and loaded and ready to go back onto this knitting needle. And they were all spread out, so I gotta, I gotta scrunch them. Actually, you know what, that reminds me that I found an easier way to do this, so uh, let's do that. So instead of having to scrunch all the stitches, what we're gonna do is about like halfway through, opposite where I've joined in the cords, I'm going to pull out a loop. So I'm just gonna like find two stitches and separate them and get that cord and I'm gonna pull on that cord and, and pull out a loop like this. And I found that this is actually an easier way. I forgot about that. So shorter end, I've pulled out a loop and I'm gonna start scrunching my stitches here. That way I don't have to scrunch all of my stitches at once on this cord because it is kind of sticky. So I'm scrunching my stitches towards that shorter cord, I wanna basically get them all the way till they're like really close to um, the edge before I join in the needle, that just makes it easier. So scrunch, 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 but be careful, don't, don't go off the end of the cord or you'll lose stitches. So I'm getting kind of close here. You can see that that's getting a little shorter. My stitches, I know you can't really see, my stitches are scrunching up here. Let's keep going. And the only reason we pulled out that loop is so that we didn't have to scrunch all of our stitches at once. Oh, I almost lost it. Okay, that's short enough. So now I'm gonna join my needle tip back in here on that really short um, end of the tube. Same as before, push it on as best as you can. Now the reason I think this way is easier is because we don't have to go over this like hump here the opposite direction. We're actually going from something like bigger to smaller, and I just find that it, it is easier. So let's go ahead and push. See, they're already falling on top, over onto the needle. Sorry, this is so dark, but we're just pushing our stitches back onto the needle. Again, never, this time we're not pulling, which is nice. Um, 
I'm just gonna keep scrunching from that loop and then the stitches just fall onto the needle. Again, you can play with this, like which direction is easier for you. I still find that knitting needle in my dominant hand is the easiest for me. So scrunch, scrunch, scrunch your stitches onto the cord and then push them onto the needle. And of course, you wanna start spreading them back out onto the needle and the cord. That's actually usually a lot easier because the cord itself is kind of sticky. So, get things all scrunched up. I just think that this goes a little bit faster than the other way. If anything is getting kind of like sticky at that point, spread your stitches out because they're not gonna wanna scoot over the, um, the cord if they're too scrunched together. Okay, I'm almost done with that half. See, lots faster. Everything's getting back onto my cord. And then we'll do the same thing with the other half. You really aren't in danger of losing stitches on the other side here because your stitches probably aren't gonna go up and over the needle. Okay, one half is done. So now I've got all this cord here in the middle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull here on the long end of my cord and start scooching all those stitches down. I wanna make this loop here disappear. So however you can do that, keep scrunching and shifting things down. Remember to keep things at least a little spread out because if you just pull, 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 I'm sure that it's possible to break this cord. So if it's getting hard to do, spread out the stitches, and then re-scrunch them. It's kind of like you're working an inchworm here, down, you're spreading out, spreading out, spreading out, and then scrunch. And then you move that scrunch on down. <laughs> so my uh, loop here is getting smaller and smaller. And the goal here is to make it disappear completely so that I can work the second half of stitches back onto the needle. I have not done this with quite as many stitches before, or maybe I haven't done this with quite a sticky of yarn, because this is definitely a little harder to move than other things. Look, almost there. And if you've never tried this, try it on tubing before because you are like, I'm afraid my stitches are gonna get lost. Just remember, don't pull on the needle and you're gonna be fine. So as I get closer to this almost being gone, I find that it's a little easier if I let my needle kind of disappear into the stitches. And then for that final little bit, just kind of um, scrunch the stitches. Let me get a little more on my inchworm here, let me get it a little more scrunch. So these stitches are kind of falling onto the needle, onto the cord. I've got my last little bit of loop here that I pulled out. If I just kind of let things like even up like that, I find it a whole lot easier. So now that's gonna be really hard to get those stitches on there. So I need to pull, pull my scrunch down further so there everything is loaded and ready to go back. Okay, so now I'm gonna flip back where the needles and my, my needle is right here in my dominant hand. Again, just if anything feels funny, just flip hands and see if that is easier for you. And we're gonna get the rest of that on here, but you already saw how to do that. So let's speed this part up. All right, here is my last little bit that is going back onto the needle. Whew, it's definitely not as easy with a sticky yarn as it is with like a smoother merino yarn, but we did it. So once you have all the stitches back on, go ahead and slide them all the way down to the cord and you are free to pop that cord off 
everything's back on. And then to store these, I just wrap them around my fingers and pop them back into the tin. All right, I hope that was helpful to see how to use these try it on tubing and let's go back now to the podcast. Tuesday videos are back and we have a brand new video this week that's like half vlog, half new office space. So you may have noticed in my Instagram that my desk is no longer in the bedroom. I think I talked about that on here where now I can move my camera like way back and it had a different chair, but we've been bringing my desk chair back in here because it's so much easier to do the podcast when I can like roll and move around. But we moved my desk from the bedroom into the living room where Kent is also set up. We got him a brand new desk from FlexiSpot. We both have FlexiSpot standing desks, which I use every single day standing and sitting. It's the best thing ever. I even got one where mine is like a matte white top so I can film tutorials like the one you just saw on top of it. But Kent's brand new desk is really cool and shiny. It's got like a glass top, it has a drawer and all these fancy like USB plugs and stuff. So his is really cool. So during that vlog, we are just having a regular work day. There's knitting, there's uh, toaster, and we're getting the desk all set up. So go and check that out and expect regular videos now on Tuesday since my summer break is over and we have so many things to share with you. Coming up next week, we're actually going to have a yarn store tour um, of the yarn store that we visited in Atlanta, the Craftivist. So be on the lookout for that. Now we also have brand new merch. So the Definition Collection is back. Like I said, I'm gonna give lots of reminders. I'm wearing one right now. The Definition Collection is only back for a limited time through October 21st, and all eight original designs are included, plus six new ones. So the six new words are UFO, Crojo, Whip, Cassonitis, Yarn Barf, and Tinking. So go take a look at all of those. The link will be right down below. Coming up in October, the Love & Stitches membership is opening for the last time in 2022. It will be open October 3rd through, I can't remember the end date, but it's like a Monday through a Friday. It will be open for the final quarter of the month. We have so many fun things going on. If you sign up um, for the, there's like a, a wait list sort of thing down below. If you sign up for that, I'm going to be sending out a few emails ahead of the membership opening that gives you a sneak peek into what we are doing this quarter to kind of like, you know, get you to see everything that goes on inside the membership. Cause sometimes I think I don't explain, <laughs> explain it very well. People are like, wait, what, what you have a membership and we do all sorts of things. We do make alongs, we do events, we have so much fun. Um, so I'm going to be sharing a lot of things that we have been doing to kind of give you an idea of what goes on and then sneak peeks for what's coming up in quarter four. So if you're interested, um, no harm in signing up for those emails. You'll just get information and then you can choose on October 3rd if you would like to join us for the fourth quarter. What else is coming up? There's so many events and I feel like there's so many knitting events coming up next year that I'm already getting signed up with. So coming up soon is DFW Fiberfest. DFW Fiberfest is September 22nd through the 25th. I'm going to be there on Friday, 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 what is going on with my brain? Friday, September 23rd. I'm taking a class in the morning. I'm going to shop the marketplace in the afternoon and I am going to the event on Friday night with Gregory Stitch, which is now sold out, but the marketplace is open. I don't know about classes, but you can check it all out. I'll leave the link to DFW Fiber Fest down below. It's coming up so soon. I'm so excited. And then after that, pretty quickly after that, is Rhinebeck. And I just realized I forgot to write in my dates here, so I'm just going to have to spitball it. <laughs> Rhinebeck is coming up in October. I believe it's like the... Oh, you know what? It's better if I just look at a calendar real quick. So hang on. Let me pull up a calendar. <laughs> I have it in my calendar. I just forgot to write the dates on my notes. So Rhinebeck is coming up um, October 15th and 16th though on October 14th is all the pre-Rhinebeck events. So if you would like to see 
Uh, if you would like to go to Rhinebeck, um, make sure you have that on your calendar and have all of the plans. And if you would like to meet me, I would love to meet you. I am going to be at Cape Palooza on Friday morning. I'm going to be at Woolen Folk. I'm going to be at Rhinebeck on Saturday the 15th and Sunday the 16th. Kent is coming with me. Toaster is staying behind in New York City. Last year, I took the train up every single day. Not doing that this year. I'm taking the train up Friday morning, but then I'm staying Friday and Saturday night so that I don't have to go back and forth and I can actually do things in the evening, which might actually just be go to sleep early because I am I am one of those people who like love being around, um, sorry, love being around everyone and talking, knitting and all that stuff. But then after that, I'm like, I need a rest. <laughs> so who knows how that will be um, that weekend, but I'm, I'm really excited for it and that it's coming up so soon. Last event, um, which is top of mind for me because I'm actually signing up for it in like 20 minutes, is Vogue, Vogue Knitting Live New York 2023. So previously there was a Vogue Knitting in August that got canceled. So there is now one in February, which I believe January is their normal time. So I think they were already planning this Vogue Knitting Live. I think this is their biggest one and I wanna to go to it so badly. I've always wanted to go and literally where I am right now, I am looking at the hotel where it's at. It is so close to me that it is going to be the most convenient knitting event I've ever been to because even like in between classes, I'll be able to go home. I'm so excited. So anyway, Vogue Knitting Live New York City 2023 is February 9th through the 12th. I'm planning to get, I, well, I can't remember what the package is called, Big Apple or something like that. They have a package where you're able to go to four classes and the classes are amazing. I'm so excited to sign up for those. Um, and you get to go to a cocktail hour. You get to go to a gala dinner where Hohi Locatelli is speaking. So I am definitely going to go to that. I'm so excited. And they also have discounted um, tickets for Hades Town. So I'm hoping to snag two tickets for that as well for myself and for Kent. And I'm gonna have to get off of here in a few minutes because 20 minutes the sign up's open and I wanna be fast. So I need to make sure I'm all ready to go for that. That is all <laughs> that's coming up in the near future. And I'll have links for everything down below. So this past weekend, we traveled to Atlanta for the Oregon UGA game. So let me back up and explain. So Kent and myself, neither one of us went to University of Georgia, neither one of us went to Oregon. However, Kent's brother went to Oregon and my brother went to Georgia. So we were able to go and experience this fun football game, even though it wasn't that fun because Oregon got crushed but that's okay. <laughs> um, so we did have a good time overall. But the cool thing is that Kent's brother lives about an hour from Atlanta. So we were able to go and stay with him. My brother lives in Nashville and he drove down for the game. So it was the four of us and we had a great weekend. It went by way too fast. So Thursday we flew out and on Friday, um, Kent and I went to the College Football Hall of Fame, which was really cool if you're ever in Atlanta definitely go to that. It was so fun. They have all these interactive things where when you go in, you get to, you pick like your college that you went to or the college that you support. And then all the exhibits like interact with that. It would say like, hi, Natalie. Um, you know, here's some facts about the University of Tennessee, which is where I went to school. So it was really cool. We had a lot of fun. And then we also went to the Craftivist, the yarn store on Friday, and we got to meet the owner, Jennifer, and one of the people that worked there, Vincent. And I'd already met Vincent, so it was really good to see him again. And we did a whole um, tour of the store, which will be coming out next week. So I can't wait to share all of that with you. But if you do live in Georgia, the I think it's called the Sweet Georgia peach. I think it's called Sweet Georgia Peach. It's a yarn crawl. It's happening this weekend. So September, today is the 6th. So what is it? September like 9th, 10th, and 11th, I think. Um, but that yarn crawl is going on all across Georgia this weekend. So make sure to check that out. And then if you are too far away, then just hang tight until this upcoming Tuesday and you'll get to go on a virtual tour, virtual tour <laughs> with me and with Kent and with Jennifer and Vincent. So that will be a lot of fun. 
And then on Saturday, we went to the football game, of course. It was in the Mercedes-Benz um, like stadium, which is a dome, which was very cool. Um, but Oregon did not play well. I mean, I guess they played okay. I don't know. I'm, I'm like super into college football, but I don't know that much about the game of football as much as like Kent or um, my brother and Kent's brother. Like I, I'm just there for a good time basically. And of course I knitted on my hat during the game. I got so much of it done, like traveling to Atlanta and back and working on it during the game and everything. So I, that's why that muscle row hat got finished because I knit about half of it just over the whole long weekend. When we came back on Sunday morning, we just needed time to like unpack and unwind and we went to the grocery store, you know, all that boring stuff. But then on Sunday night, because Monday was a holiday, um, I went with Kent to a local bar, which he runs social media for, and they had a karaoke competition and it was the final week of the karaoke competition. So all these people that had been competing over the few weeks came for like, the final like sing off basically and brought their friends and family and there were judges from Broadway there. I mean, it was a big deal. And I sat there and I knit on my muscle bro hat and I finished it <laughs> on Sunday night, which I am like not a huge, like late night crowd kind of a person. So having knitting helps me like be there and be supportive and chill out a little bit. And I had a good time aside from it being really crowded and hot <laughs> and my bed is way more comfortable and I like watching TV, I felt proud of myself for getting out and doing that and it was a lot of fun. And then yesterday was um, Labor Day here in the US, which was a, a day off and we took the day off and I just hung out and knit, did like the teensiest bit of work and a little bit of laundry, which I still need to put away. But overall it was like a great, really long weekend because we had busyness and fun and travel, but then still got to come home and relax before diving back, back into things today, which was great. Okay, currently I am, so I'm looking at the time because I do need to go sign up for my Vogue classes. Um, currently I am still reading The Other Miss Bridgerton, which is the Bridgerton prequel series, the Rokesby series. It's very good, I'm about halfway done um, with that. I am also reading Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adiemi, which is a fictional book um, that I'm reading with a book club, and it is very good. I'm only reading like two chapters a week on that, so it's going to be a slow read, um, but it's not actually a slow read. Like, it's very good. I was reading it this morning, and it's awesome. I am currently watching House of Dragon. We need to catch up on this past week's episode because we were out at the karaoke competition on Sunday watching The Bachelorette, of course, was watching that last night, and it's a two-night, um, two-part, two-night thing this week, so now I get to watch more Bachelorette tonight, very excited, and then we're also watching Claim to Fame, which ends this week, I believe, and has a two-part finale. It's on ABC, or you can rewatch it on Hulu, and it's about celebrity um, relatives who are, like, trying to keep their celebrities, um, I did ID like secret. It's really good. It's a fun, really fun reality show. I like it a lot. Okay. Weekly wins. <laughs> um, I'm actually very proud of us for taking Labor Day off. I know that doesn't sound like a very big deal, but for me specifically running my own business, it has taken a long time to set boundaries around work. And it's taken a lot of planning ahead. And so I've learned over this whole year, this whole 2022, since I started the perfectionism project, um, I have learned how to plan so much better. And I was able to plan two weeks ago that when we returned from our trip, we would have Monday off. And I mostly mean me, but like when I'm not working, then I'm not asking Kent to do stuff either because I have everything ready to go. Um, so we were able to take yesterday off and like, recover from our trip and everything. And it was just really great. So I am, I'm proud of that. I feel really, really good about that. And I hope you can find something in your week that you've done that has made you proud of yourself. I think that's important to always look back at. All right. That's everything for this week. I hope you enjoyed the episode and the try it on tubing tip. Don't forget to um, check out the links down below, watch the desk vlog. Um, 
check out the merch if you haven't already, get signed up for the membership waitlist, all kinds of things, so much going on. But I'm gonna go get signed up for my Vogue classes and I will see you in the next one. Bye. The Definition Collection is back with six brand new designs. You can shop this collection on my spread shop, which will be linked down below from now through October 21st. But if you want to grab a shirt or sweatshirt by Rhinebeck, make sure to order by September 16th to allow plenty of time for shipping. Happy shopping.